from Provo, Utah, this is the Ultimate Final Fantasy Podcast with your hosts, Joseph DeGolier and Caleb Schweiss. This is Ultima Final Fantasy. Welcome to another episode. Another of, one. Oh, yes. Yes. Another episode of Ultima Final Fantasy, the ultimate <laughs> Final Fantasy podcast. I am your host, Caleb Schweiss. And I am your other host, Joseph de Gaulier. It's not every time that we reveal our last names. This is a very special episode. Not really. No, yeah, not that special. <laughs> Today we will be going over religion in Final Fantasy. Yes. <laughs> uh, there's obviously there's a ton of themes, you know, with the summons and yeah. ten. <laughs> so we'll be discussing them. And uh, first, let's get to the little tidbits, the little nuggets of news. Hold on, there. hold on, real quick. Um, usually we have an iTunes review at this point, but for the last like three weeks, we've had no iTunes reviews. You guys, we know that you're out there. We know. That you are using the podcast app and iTunes to listen to our show. 70% of you. Yeah. Please, plus, please leave a review. Plus, we have more members on the forum than we do reviews. <laughs> you guys, I don't think so. I think we have a little less. But I know, like, four of those reviews are from people I know personally like oh, really? on iTunes. So. There are people on the forums that have not reviewed us on iTunes. Help us out, guys. Please. <laughs> you know, if we, just for future reference, if we ever do another contest, which is partially why I think people are holding out, because they're like, oh, the one guy won a mug. And I got to wait. Gage Klein won yeah, a Gage mug. Gage Klein won a mug. Well, yes. they're probably not going to know his name, unless they're like, him, Okay. the mug. But uh, I think some of you might be holding out, because we'll, occasionally we did... We might do another one of those at some point. Don't say that. Now they no, definitely no, no, will. No, no. Here's the idea, though, is but you can go in and edit your reviews. So if we ever do another contest, we'll make it to where someone can't just win because they're awesome at writing reviews every time. But you can go in and edit your review, and we'll consider all of the reviews. So if you feel like, because there's a few okay. that are, you know, not that I think they're bad reviews, great podcast, good subjects. Well, if you went in and changed it to, a little more in depth of a review. Blah. Yeah, of a review. <laughs> you would be then eligible to, you know, win the thing if we ever did another contest. Okay. If. All right. So don't be holding out because we did a contest one well, time. Well, let's try to. We'll get a t shirt design for us. And if it's any okay. good, maybe we might be giving away a t shirt for iTunes reviews. Yeah. Maybe. I'm, I've given up on Stitcher. No, I do appreciate Sniper Nine Twelve's review on Stitcher. Uh, I've yeah. given up. No one else really reviews on Stitcher <laughs> for us, at least. So. Not even for us. I've looked at other shows and like reviews in Stitcher are sparse. Really? Yeah. Uh, I've never really used Stitcher. I just use iTunes. No, I don't use Stitcher either because they take the quality of the episode and they like chop it in half. For space, for size. Yeah, reasons? for size reasons. Yeah, oh, which I guess for some people is, you know, they they want that, but. I, I prefer the quality, mostly because I work on the quality as much as I can. Right. So. So as a listener, even to your podcast, you prefer the quality? So yes. I do listen to our podcasts to make sure, you know, things that I need to right, change right. or whatever. I meant for other podcasts. Like, you actively, <coughs> you'd get them from iTunes over Stitcher pretty much any time. I, I, I like the podcast app oh, in okay. iTunes. It's not iTunes itself. That's kind of slow and convoluted, but the iTunes or the podcast app for like iPhones and iPods, mm -hmm. it's pretty awesome. Okay. So there's that. And then there's like the podcast app for Android things. It's just called podcasts or something like that. Yeah. It's some third party thing, but that's actually a pretty good app too. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. So yeah. Give us reviews guys, we, please, we would please, love please. You forever. Yeah, we might even... We'll see about that t-shirt thing. Yeah, we have see to come up it. with something sweet first. But. Right. It might just be our logo. That's something sweet. But yeah. We gotta make sure it looks good on a shirt. Yeah. 
<laughs> okay, now let's get to the news. Okay, so first up in news, Theater Rhythm, Final Fantasy Curtain Call, uh, just released its final DLC pack. There will be no more Final Fantasy Curtain Call that we know of. Final D- I think just barely came out. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like, this is it. We're done. <laughs> That's what it says on this site, anyways, on digitalspy.com, which... Considering the name of the site, maybe it's not really. <laughs> or maybe it's really good. Maybe it's a really good site. Yeah, like probably. Your cover. No, that's that's what it says. It's probably true. And uh, it includes some new tracks, including Chocobo's theme, Final Fantasy VII's The Chase, and Final Fantasy Type O's We Have Come. You can also get uh, the character of Oron, I do believe, from King- the Kingdom Hearts version of him. Okay. Yeah. All right, so anyways, second up in news. This is the, this is the last piece of news, yeah. actually. There's, like, no news this week. Once again. Yeah, no news. They, they do the conventions, and then they figure, meh, we don't have to say anything. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, a shitload of 14 news. If you want to go and look at the pack and stuff, you can. We're not going to go over that in detail, though. Yeah, there's a ton. So Square gave us sort of a news IOU here. They said more news on Final Fantasy 15 coming on October 31st. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> like that's So uh, our news to report is that there will be more news on the 31st. Yeah, so it better be something fucking awesome. Way to go, Square. For them to be like more news is coming on this specific day. Be ready. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Uh, so that's it for news. Yeah, time for. Uh, what did What did you say you wanted to have happen with the theater rhythm? Before oh, we started? I think it would be sweet if they had like a multiplayer thing, where you would fight against each other doing the songs, and you'd be because in the theater rhythm you're dealing damage to monsters and shit. So like Dance Dance Revolution, just yeah, yeah, just yeah. Like, all right. And, like, you've got different characters that you bring in, and then, like, the white mages will cure your party when they're taking damage from the other team. And, yeah, that'd be actually kind of cool. Yeah. I think as that would be cool, yeah. what it is. It's too bad. Mentioning. It's too late. It and is. They're not doing any more Final Fantasy theater rhythms. They nope. Might, and the they last, might move on to other games, but... And the last DLC is out, so that's fucking everything. It's yeah, over. it's over. <laughs> I, I don't know why I'm crying. I haven't even played it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you play the demo one or at the? Convention? No, you played the demo one. I was going. I was going to try to play the demo at the convention, and even though there was no one at the thing in the morning, there was like a billion people. <laughs> later on, when I was like, "Oh, I might check out that theater rhythm," there's like, it, it was always full, like yeah. the little booths with the theater rhythm stuff. Yeah. Hey, you guys who skipped last week's or. It's not really last week. It was like four days ago. The episode that we put out, the Final Fantasy fourteen Fan Festival, even if you're not into fourteen, I think it's a good episode. It just talks about our Vegas trip, and it's a lot of fun, so check yeah, that out. Yeah, it's not just fourteen. Yeah. A so, lot of it's... So those of you who were turned off by that. A lot of it's uh, us swimming and being bloated from insane foods. Oh, my God. Yeah. The world's biggest burrito. Yeah, the ultimate burrito. <laughs> All right, let's move on to our discussion. Do it. Okay, so we're doing this as a late response to the game theory video that talks about um, how Final Fantasy is anti religious or religion. And, uh, it's very, it's a very interesting subject, and you did some research on it. Yeah. Um, and you looked at the video, of course, and looked what they were talking about. And right. The video is quite good. It's pretty well put together. It right. It covers just about everything. There's a few things that we're going to go into a little further that they didn't, but it's a great video if it you is. haven't seen it. It's uh, the Game Theory dude. He has a ton of shit on YouTube. So check it out. Uh, yeah, their videos are pretty entertaining, I'd say. Yeah, I enjoy him. So, yeah. how do you feel Final Fantasy portrays religion overall? Okay, well, I just want to clarify right before we start off that 
I'm going to try to stay really neutral upon my own religious like beliefs and beliefs and feelings towards religion. So just because we're discussing religion doesn't necessarily mean we're putting out our own opinions on it. Real yeah. quick, I just want to say that before we start. Yeah, here. we should. We're not putting any input into this, hopefully, that's <laughs> from us. This is just what we've seen what and we've what seen we think it game. means, what the guy on the video thinks it means, and why. So Sure. So ask your question again. What do you... What do you think Final Fantasy... How do you think Final Fantasy portrays religion overall? I think it portrays organized religion as being something quite easy to corrupt. Okay. And most especially I can think of the storyline in Final Fantasy X where the leaders of this religion that usually does good... Um, they start um, going evil. <laughs> I'd say. Right. So and start using their religious, uh, their power in the religion to um, to do things that are not right. Right. And in Final Fantasy X, if you guys haven't played it, which I imagine everyone probably has, the, everyone who's listening to this probably yeah, I, I has would assume. Final Fantasy X. Yeah. So uh, the Church of Yevon in X is. Yeah, you know, like you said, and it seems pretty pretty legit, except for Seymour. He's creepy the entire time. And it's kind of based on the idea that... Well, the, you have an initially... It's like this kind of confusing story where they had the members <laughs> sacrifice themselves to stop sin, but they kind of... Uh, kind of like created sin. So basically, Yevon became sin itself, which is like incredibly unsubtle representation of the evils of man okay. in 10. And Sin, his objective is to destroy populated cities that use machinery or technological advancements, which is a huge statement against any organized religion that, like, this one is, uh, you're too advanced, so... We have to destroy this technology. Or so, it will be so the game, in one way that you could read it, is that the church stops progression, or a religion stops. Uh, yeah, progression, exactly. Yeah, that's that's definitely that's, a way that, you that could see be it. the statement that Final Fantasy X is making. Right, and although the Church of Yevon is super messed up, right? So I, <laughs> and it turns out that I think sin. I don't know. I don't even remember if the machines even mattered. I can't remember exactly, but I know that he does destroy the populated areas, and that's the idea behind the religion is to kind of suppress. And that's why one of the main characters, Waka, hates machines because his brother tried to use him against Sin, and Sin, of course, is like the anti-machinist and destroyed everything. So he's just against. I never know when to say Machina or machines. When I'm talking about Final Fantasy. <laughs> yeah. It's weird. So that's that's definitely something that's probably derived from the issue of uh, Galileo and talking about how the, the world wasn't flat. And that kind of went against the ideas at the time. And he was put on house arrest until he died because he went against the teachings at the time. So that seems kind of similar to that in a way to where... It's just, it just seems quite similar to me. I don't know. You see what I'm coming from? I see where you're coming from. Here's another side to that of the Final Fantasy X argument. The organized church of Yevon is corrupted. Right. But the spiritual teachings of Yevon with the far plane and the, let's say the prayer of the fates is another part of mm -hmm. Final Fantasy X's world. Those are actually in the world. Like, they're not disproven or anything. Right. So the spiritual aspect of it, is, it's kind of in support of that. Do you, do you see what I'm saying here? Yeah, the, this, the game, the, the, the religion in the game is, is <laughs> fact. The game is, like the game is spiritual, but it's against 
organized religion. Which, so yeah, which is very it's similar. It's religious, but it's against the organization. Right. And it's very... Like the afterlife stuff, or like they, you know, see their relatives on the far plane, stuff like that. Right, you know, and they become, they become the uh, monsters they fight, and that's why mm-hmm. when you kill stuff, it turns into the, the spirits. Sure, yeah. And, yeah, so it's... It's, it's all very connected, and I don't... See, I don't think it is anti-religion. It's more anti-organized religion. Yeah, I think it's anti-corruption and anti, like you said, organized religion. And which is very similar to the Japanese culture as a whole. They're very interesting, actually. From, especially from our viewpoint out here, where they're like super conservative in Japan, right? But this is the one area where... In general, they, yes. In general. Especially in their business practices. Oh, yes. But this is the one area where their conservatives and ours are, like, completely opposite. There, it... They, no one really recognizes as being religious. There's a small percentage of people that do, and a lot of it is just kind of a cultural thing. It's just things they do. You know, like, when their children are born at the age of three months or something like that, they take them to the... Shinto shrines, and they get blessed, and they get blessed, you know, at age 7 and 10, I think. And okay. this is something that they've just done forever, so they just they just do. And it's... And Shintoism is kind of... It's like a loose... Loose religion, in a lot of ways. And people practice that and Buddhism a lot in mm-hmm. conjunction over there. So... Yeah, it, I think it matches their culture a lot in Final Fantasy X, to where, sure, they're very spiritual, but it doesn't necessarily mean you have to do everything that the church recommends, like with the anti-machines and the stuff like that. It kind of puts a more level-mindedness to the whole... to everything, you know? So you're saying that the the majority of Japanese people, I know that not, I I have a friend who's Japanese and he's Mormon, and so he's very religious. Right. Um, so you said, uh, the majority of Japanese people that we can see in statistics and things like that, they will do what was or is considered religious practices as part of tradition, but yet not necessarily believe or um, practice consistent uh, religious um, you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah. If yeah. They, they, uh, this is a very difficult subject for me to talk about for some reason. <laughs> well, it's difficult because it's just so different, I think. Yeah. You know, there's like looking at the 2000 census that I read up on, uh, uh, less than 15% of the population reported a formal religious affiliation. That is fucking tiny. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? That is way small compared to what we would see pretty much anywhere else. Mm-hmm. And yet 90% of them go to the Shinto shrines and stuff like that each year. It's really interesting and it's it could just be it's obviously just a cultural thing. That's just something they've done and mm, they will continue to do for yeah, a while. It's... Well, I would actually argue that we kind of have the same thing here. Now, we're from a very religious area. Right. Um, this is Utah, after all. I think it's, what was it, 60% Mormon? And in some areas, it's a higher concentration than that. Yeah, I think uh, so. The only state that's more, I think, is Idaho. Idaho is more? I think so. What? <laughs> well, well, Idaho doesn't have nearly as many people. I don't that's think true. Either, so. That's true. Smaller sample. Um, so we're from a very religious area, and in I, I grew up Mormon, so I'm just... I'll just say this outright. Uh, if you don't go to church, you're kind of like seen as someone who needs to be saved and <laughs> right and fixed. And so they, they go out of their way to help you. And by the way, most Mormons are very nice about this. Most don't go out of their way and act like a douche about it. Yeah, you're not ostracized. Generally. Right. And um, so in this area, being religious means going to church every single Sunday. Right. Um, and it's like that in some parts of the South and everywhere, really, there are people who, who will do that. Right. Um, however, <laughs> I can say that my extended family will say that they are Christians sometimes. And then they will say that they are, uh, 
agnostic or atheist sometimes the same people and they will almost always go to church on Easter and dur- like during Christmas they will go to church mm. and so I feel like in that sense and they, they're not the only people who do that in that sense there are, there are people who even here uh, at least in Wyoming <laughs> they uh, there are people who just the religion is kind of a traditional thing right they may believe it in some sense I don't know I can't really get inside their heads but right uh, that's kind of how they see it it is a traditional thing this Christmas and Easter thing here right I mean it's it's a big thing so I, I can see a connection that way where the tradition is kept alive well not necessarily the beliefs are <sighs> Tradition. Pra- the the practices are not practiced as frequently or strongly as the religion dis- dictates. <laughs> right. It's more we're we are I don't know, we're beings of tradition in a lot of ways. We do the same things over right. and over again a lot it's, of times. Yeah, you know, like you buy the same You do it with your family and stuff like that. It's a good pr- I I think there's there's I think well, I can't say my opinion, but I I, I enjoy being with my family around Christmas. Yeah. Certainly. Yeah, I mean, it's like one of the few times I ever do it, so it's great. It's, we're all over the place. So, yeah, in a, in a lot of ways, there are, well, in some ways at least, there are similarities between Japanese culture and our own, at least in that sense. I and think I think there's a connection there. It's Certainly, there's a smaller percentage of atheists in the States right. than there is in Japan. Oh, yeah. Or at least uh, non-practicing people. Right. <laughs> But so now that we have kind of a little better understanding of the Japanese culture, I think it makes it easier to address this as, as you said before, not an attack on religion, but more a this is what could happen if everyone follows the same thing. And then there's a few people who don't. Right. I heard about this cult in Japan where this one dude said he was Jesus Christ like risen again. Okay. And he was like this yoga teacher. I wish I could get his name. I could probably just look him up real quick, but I'm not going to. Uh, he was his yoga teacher and he basically started this cult um, where people would bas- they would like do what he said no matter what. And he uh, as part of his religious thing would have them he, they were making meth and they were making like <laughs> uh, they were making some kind of uh, chemical that they, they, I think it was in the 80s, they like, um, they poisoned a bunch of people inside of a train station um, just because this guy said to do it. Because he was, he was Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. And so I think things like that, <laughs> um, that incident's a pretty big in- incident over there. I wish I could remember the guy's name and, and the exact stuff because I just heard about this like two weeks ago. But uh, uh, things like that will certainly make a question uh, religious <laughs> affiliation, right? Um, especially corruption like that. Yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty corrupt. Yeah, it's like Kefka level <laughs> corruption. You know, it's not quite. But did the people die? I think I think a few people did die. Oh, okay. So it wasn't the whole train station. No, it wasn't. It, I can't remember if it was a bomb. No, oh, I think they released it in like the water. It was some chemical, some weapon, like a chemical weapon that... Jesus. Horrible, yeah. And then they raided his place, and then they found meth and a whole bunch of other stuff. Oh. I wonder if he called it... Uh... So, yeah, don't do yoga in Japan. Yeah, this, <laughs> the teachers are very questionable. <laughs> They're questionable here. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so, besides Final Fantasy X's obvious... Uh, I guess anti organized religion stance we do see a lot of positive themes in the series I mean we've got the summons that come from various beliefs true and they help you out they do help you they're good they're good beings even (laughs) though the the Ifrit as we talked about before Ifrit's a douchebag in Final Fantasy 8 it's true (laughs) and he's not really supposed to be a good guy in (laughs) mythology so they do take it and kind of mess with it a bit they don't necessarily keep it true because shiva is supposed to be like the goddess of fertility or something like that and uh it's something oh god i do not know my hinduism is that hindu yeah it's hindu i don't know my hinduism it's it's something it's something like that and she's like a 
multi-breasted <laughs> thing, and she's never depicted as blue, right? And she's always blue and ice in Final Fantasy. So they they borrow the names and some of the design, but and then, then they, they add just... elements to it. Oh yeah, which they have to because it's magic. But well, that's something that is unique about Final Fantasy, or at least was when it first came out, is the elemental stuff yeah. that went along with it. I think it was probably the first video game that did that. I'm not sure, though. Yeah, we're not Dragon Warrior, maybe, but... I, I have no Dragon idea. Warrior had this had a similar... Uh, battle system. Battle system, yeah. Right. They created what we know as the Final Fantasy right. battle system. But... So, I mean, when you look at that, it seems like they would have a, a fairly positive view on it, and I think they do. I think they... Appreciate it for what it is, and don't appreciate it for what it can be, <laughs> like in the story of Final Fantasy X, and also the story of Final Fantasy Tactics. And I don't know anything about Tactics. You've never played it? Never. We've talked about this on the show. I don't know how you could have never played Tactics. I've never played it. Now, I have been in the living room for about an hour while Caleb played it. Fat Caleb rude how did you feel about it do you think it looked interesting i think it looked interesting sure yeah <laughs> it's like nothing that we've experienced <laughs> thus far really interesting would be the word i'd say but i've heard it's a great game and i'm excited to play it when we get to it we got a while though oh yeah we've got tons of i mean it will be the first one of the first spin-off games we'll get to but yeah we still have a while so yeah let's uh Let's talk about tactics. I'll bring Caleb over here. All right, I'll let you and Caleb talk about tactics. Okay. So Caleb your, and Caleb, get your sick ass out of here. <laughs> ah, what's up, guys? Not much. So how do you feel the religion and tactics is represented, and do you think it's harsh? or what? How do you, how do you feel about it overall? Well, the religious aspect in Final Fantasy Tactics is based off of... Uh, Catholicism, obviously, and they're more based off of the, uh, oh, what was it? It was the, um, the Inquisition of the, uh, Catholicism sect. Right. So, uh, yeah, these guys go around and, uh, they basically worship demons. Their whole religion is centered around, uh, Santa Jura Galabados, who uh, was possessed by the Lukavi Ultima, which is really a demon, like the most powerful demon that they have there. Okay. And uh, the leaders of the church at the time are basically funding both sides of the war, because there's two wars, go well, there's a war going on between two guys fighting for the throne. Okay. And uh, the church is funding both sides to get them to be wounded enough for the church to take the most power in the country. And while that's going on at the same time, other people in the church are trying to resurrect Ultima through, um, by bringing back St. Tejora. And it's, it's pretty, uh, St. Tejora was kind of based on Jesus. Like oh, they, really? ha yeah, they have a story where, uh, when Saint Dejour was born, uh, the like the first thing that he did after he was born was get up and walked over to a well and claimed that it was uh, unholy, and everyone who drank from it died. And so the people who survived that uh, basically believed that he was some kind of holy child that uh, was like uh, basically their savior. Okay. Uh, so yeah, the their religion is kind of they believe in a false god basically, in this, and they follow a false prophet, and they're just trying to basically take the power in Final Fantasy Tactics, and the uh, the main character finds out the plot that the church has, and they brand him a heretic, to uh, basically take over and help. The, so to stop him from trying to stop them from reviving Ultima. And they basically use the main character's sister as the host for Ultima, and the main character is forced to then kill his sister, and then they kill him, 
and everyone who knows about the plot so that the church still survives even after the events of tactics. Jeez. So basically, you don't win. Yeah, that's a that's a really harsh story. <laughs> yeah, re- religion is the heaviest part of tactics, and they are definitely the worst people. Okay. So, I, yeah, that could also, I mean, that's obviously another interpretation of what Ten has going for it, which is power in the wrong hands is always a bad thing. Yeah. And religion is a fairly easy medium to use because of the faith-based aspect of it, where you it, you just kind of believe and you just do things because people that have given you wise, you know, information or wise uh, whatever shit in the past are now telling you to do something else. And in tactics, people are really fervent about that shit. Like, they, yeah. you're, you're killing monks and stuff <laughs> in the game because they're coming for you. Well, the thing is, in tactics, not everybody knows that the St. Maju- uh, Ajora was really possessed by Ultima. Only a few people know, and those few people are trying to resurrect him. And because the... And because Ramza is able to find this out, he's branded a heretic. So it basically everyone in Ivalice believes that he is against the religion so that they go to kill him. So really he's just against the corruption. Really, yeah, he's against the corruption. And the revitalization, the reviving of the evil. <laughs> yeah, basically. God. Revivalization, yeah. <laughs> Sweet word coined by me. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, that's that's another very obvious... A religious statement brought to us by Final Fantasy. Oh yeah, <laughs> and there is some. There's a fair amount of symbolism in Final Fantasy VII too. I mean, yeah, with the uh, the Kabbalah. Yeah. And then, just uh, it just uh, the video is kind of right in a lot of ways. There's a lot of negative, negative feelings toward it overall, and. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. All right, well, I'm just going to let Joe switch back okay, in here. that's fine. Thank you, Caleb Craig, for your insightful <sighs> yeah, let insight. Me, give me a couple seconds Thanks. to go to the restroom. Um, so you're talking about Final Fantasy VII's references to religion? Yeah. Yeah, I just... I'm sorry, could you say that, could not say that again? I just said there's a lot of symbolism in Seven okay. as well. But first, actually, let's talk about... Kefka in Final Fantasy VI. Oh, the god he becomes at the end? Yeah. With the angels and the Yeah, he becomes demons. god. Essentially. He is all-powerful, and you kill him. Doesn't that make your whole party god, then? Like, you're each a god? Eh, god killer. <laughs> if you kill the god, I mean, it's like... You then should become the god. <laughs> Except for, uh, what's-his-name? Who falls into the pit... To never be seen again. Oh, what was that guy's the the mime dude? Oh, Gogo. Gogo, yeah. Or Gogo. Gogo doesn't become a god. <laughs> Maybe the god of the underworld. I don't think they become gods either. I think uh, Kefka becomes a god unto himself. Yeah, well, you kick his ass, so he's yeah. clearly. And that, certainly, right? he has a lot of power because he uh, takes the world's power and he puts it into his own hands. But that doesn't necessarily mean that he's a god. Right. He's just godlike. <laughs> right, and the the music that's playing while you're fighting them is the key it's in is like the most famous just key for any religious uh, organ stuff. Oh, you're talking about the organ that that's playing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that is that's kind of a reference. Yeah, like a church organ. It almost yeah, sounds like it sounds certainly very much like it. And yeah, then, I can see that. And the the uh, the battle actually is a copy of the. The battle in or the fight in Dante's Inferno, the ascension to through the levels. Is that what that is? Yeah, is it's, that uh, what that's a reference it to? It starts in in hell. We'll have to do that on a Did You Know? Yeah, well, yeah. Well, I I'll have I to research it. it and... Yeah, it starts in hell, then it goes to purgatory, and then you get everlasting life with the final fight with Kefka. Oh, okay, it's, all right. Yeah, I can definitely see that. Yeah, that's almost obvious now that you're saying that. Yeah, and Certainly. then you kill the the part that's not. Probably in Dante's Inferno is the part where you kill you God. Do? I don't think that was a part of it, but yeah, there's definitely some in there. And then in in seven, did you notice anything in seven so far? Religious? Yeah. 
I think Seven's a little bit more about corrupt corporate um, corporations than uh, than, religion. than religion. Yeah, it is, and the it's it's interesting in Seven and most Final Fantasies actually like the the mysticism is just. Generally, it's just accept. There is a spirituality in the uh, in the planet. In the planet, yes. Yeah, you're right about that. It's very similar to like the far plane, only it's um, it's the live stream. Yeah, it's more. <laughs> it's kind of more connected. It you're seems, right. Everybody it seems... does accept it, except no. Yeah, everybody accepts it. Yeah, and that, I think that's really interesting in in seven, where it's you know magic is everyone just there accepts and... the spirituality. They accept the spirituality in Final Fantasy X too. Also, yeah, they do. <laughs> can't say Final Fantasy X too. T O O. We can't confusing people. We can't talk about that. <laughs> we can talk about it. and We will talk about it. And it's supposed to be a good game once you get past the. Actually, the story's supposed to still be crap, but <laughs> the gameplay's supposed to be fun. Yeah. Once of course, past some the people will disagree. Gigantic block of cheese. You. Uh... So, oh God! The, the, just the opening video. Just... I know. I I wanted to die. <laughs> Like why? Uh, I'm gonna turn attention here to a couple things. We're gonna we gotta wrap this up soon so we can get to our other t- other segments. Um, I think religion is used positively in Final Fantasy One. Uh, you go to the church and you get revived. Right. Although there it's is... a very useful, nice thing in Final Fantasy One. Right. Please explain Final Fantasy Two system of religion. Well, in Final Fantasy 2, whenever a character dies, and this is brutal, okay, you go to the church and you have to pay them <laughs> to resurrect your character. And if you say no, they won't resurrect the character. They're like a donation of 10 gil or 20 gil or something. Or 500 or... It gets crazy, yeah. It yeah, scales. Yeah, it gets bad if... Yeah, it's it's not as bad as the inns. Thank no. God. No. Oh. The inns are sick, but... <laughs> the church wants money from you to resurrect your party to then save the world. It's like, yeah, you guys are done if I'm not up. Like, why aren't you just doing this as a service? It's not really a religion. It's a business yeah, that's in kinda, Final Fantasy too. And I think they kind of touch on that as the way they kind of maybe see some of them as being, which I I'm guess, sorry, what are you saying? They, they, maybe that's uh, a Japanese idea of some religions is that they are kind of business-like in aspect. Which some, sure, yeah, some sure. can be, I yeah. guess. And then, I don't know. It seems kind of like a mockery whenever in four or three or five or six, especially six, when you use life and the little angel comes down from the sky and it's like what 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 and does the little animation that seems. I don't think that's a mockery. It's very useful. It's useful, but it seems like intentionally cheesy to the point where. I don't know. The, nah, the, you nah, don't think so? No, no, no. I don't think I don't think anybody thought of it that much. Maybe not. Maybe I, I just think it's weird. I just think it's funny. I think they were just like, oh, we got to resurrect this guy, and they thought of a cool little animation to go with it. They a little, little, angel, a little angel baby come down and uh, you know resurrect your party. I yeah. think that's. I think that's just. I don't think that has any statement in it. Maybe not. And there's also the praying scene in 4. Oh yeah, there's the praying scene in 4 and then of course they use kind of the same praying scene in Final Fantasy 10 at the end when you're def- like defeating the guy. Yeah. Or when you're going into sin in 10. Right. But uh, in 4, the reason No, you've already defeated him by that time, I think. Yeah. Yeah. The reason that 4 bugged me at the very end was that scene. And it's not because it's a praying scene and it brings that stuff in. It's the fact that it just sidewinded you or just like fucking destroyed you with this Oh, yeah, by the way, we're praying for your success. It's, like, out of nowhere. But a lot of that is because of the translation. And they took out a lot of the religious uh, aspects of the game. They did. Isn't that odd to you? Why would they do that? I Maybe they thought it would be offensive and it would affect the no. sales of the game. I, I know. With 10, they clearly figured out, well, no one cares. Religious imagery is not on the front of the box. It's not going to affect the sales. Right. Well, once people start reviewing it and stuff, maybe maybe that's why. Maybe we might never know. I mean, somehow Life of Pi made $270 million. Yet very religious stuff in the Life of Pi. Uh, I would uh, would argue against that, actually. Well, you can argue against it because it's Life of Pi. You can argue it. That's the whole point of the movie is that there's an argument ending. The whole point of the movie is that at the end, it doesn't matter which story you believe, they're the same. 
That's why it's not religious, but it's religious at the same time. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah. That's what makes that movie freaking sweet. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, the the praying scene in four. It's, no, but were you offended by all the Islam and Hindu and Christian things? No. And life of, exactly. No, it was fine. It was awesome. The imagery in the movie was... And no one should be. I, I figure if you're, like, full-on... I'm, I'm agnostic, okay? I, I figure if you're full-on atheist, I don't know why you would get offended at religious things, because you would just say, oh, that's silly. Yeah. Right? You would think. I don't know. You would think. I mean, but, you know, we can't put religious, we can't put Christian symbols, which they took some of those out of the Final Fantasy games, uh, to a, a country that's, or two countries that are almost all Christian. It's like, what, what, what was the percentage of Christians in the United States? We just looked this up. I think it was 75, maybe 85. A vast majority. Yeah, that's insane. <laughs> And yet you have to change stuff for that. I don't know. That's, I, what, that's dumb. I think maybe it's it mo- could have been the cultural difference. Maybe they acknowledge the fact that, oh, religion to us is, it doesn't matter necessarily. But to these guys, it's very serious. So maybe we should remove some of it. Except for the praying scene they just left in and it just felt <laughs> unnatural as fuck at that part of the game. And I'm like, what is this? I thought it was fine. It was uh, they, they did the same thing in Final Fantasy 3 where all the guys come back and they kind of help the party when they fail. and then Right, right. They help them back up. It's certainly a more spiritual aspect, or the the way they did it is a more spiritual way in Final Fantasy IV with the praying. Um, it just seemed out of place, out of context with the rest of the story, and that's why I didn't like it. Sure, I can agree with that. In in ten, it's very much in context with the entirety of the right, game, the, so it doesn't feel unnatural. Whatsoever. I think ten is definitely the 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 biggest one in the main series of Final Fantasy games that you know it it really has a religious. Uh, a, a very strong opinion on organized religion. Yeah, extremely. <laughs> or at least on Seymour. Yeah, <laughs> especially Seymour. God, that guy's such a creep. All right. So this has been a very interesting uh, discussion, I do believe, but I think it's time um, for a little bit of Spot the FF. Right. I, I really wish I had a jingle, but I don't. Oh, uh, yeah, check out that video. It's the Game Theorist. Game game theory. game theory, Final Fantasy is anti-religion. Yeah, the title is a little bit misleading. He's kind of on the same page with us, where it's not really anti-religious. Not completely. Not completely. So it's a great video. He's pretty informed. He's entertaining. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's it. And he's also kind of why we did this episode because we saw this video like a year ago yeah like, we saw this really video a long time ago and many of you guys will have seen the video so this yeah. is a little bit of an old like thing that we're bringing up but you know all right we're gonna move on to spot the ff we got a spot the ff from womble 619 on our forum he uh said in delaron i'm sorry if these things are if i'm saying these things wrong this is from world of warcraft uh the main city of wrath of the lich the main city in Wrath of the Lich King, World of Warcraft. Wrath of the Lich King, I believe, is an expansion. Yeah, it is. Uh, there is a flower girl named Aerith Primrose who wears a red sleeveless cardigan and a pink dress, just like a certain other flower girl named Aerith we love and adore. Coincidence? Me thinks not. And he gave a little picture here. You can go onto the forum. It's in the... Uh, it's in the Spot the FF thread on the podcast. And you can see her. She definitely has a lot of similarities uh, to Aerith, I'd say. Yeah, She's I agree. brunette. <laughs> Although brunette is the... And she is wearing a dress, common. and she is uh, selling flowers. I, You said earlier that it was a ripoff. Why do you believe that it's a ripoff and not just, you know, them giving a wink to the Final Fantasy series? Yeah, it's probably not really a ripoff. Okay. I was just saying that. <laughs> so, I, I, obviously someone um, who works at Blizzard really enjoys Final Fantasy VII. Yeah. At least Aerith. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. She's probably well, the they're easiest. making a full-on reference to the game. Yeah, she's probably the easiest one to use in a normal context to where it's not super, super obvious. Because, I mean, look, look Right, at if Cloud had, like, a, if some dude <laughs> had, like, a buster sword and yeah, super and spiky blonde hair. That'd be way too obvious. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's kind of a, probably, like, a, a little acknowledgement. Yeah, it's a nice little thing. I like it. 
Um, certainly never known. If you just type in Aerith, uh, Wrath of the Lich King, you'll find like videos of people passing her. Yeah. Yeah. So you guys can see this, and of course, you World of Warcraft players, you can go check it out yourself, I guess. Right. Um. Yeah. Very interesting. I I don't think it's a rip off. Uh, if you were gonna say it's a rip off, then I think you would have to have a storyline in which you fell into a building. And then someone, then this girl that you met was selling something, and then she dies halfway through the game. That would be a ripoff. Um, yeah, that's true. I mean, you know, those little details in between, whether or not they're flowers, whether or not she's in a pink dress, that doesn't matter. The ripoff would be the, the storyline ripoff. Yeah, the plot line. Um, and even then, it's still kind of a reference. But this is a, just a reference. You know, she's selling flowers, she's in a pink dress, and her name is Aerith. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah that was pretty I cool. she's in a slummy section. And uh, now we will go on to a segment that we do have a jingle for. Oh, yes. Is it the questions? No, it's not the questions oh, yet. Fuck. We're getting to the questions soon. Yes. This is tactics. Ooh. You may need. You might need. Or may. Or may. <laughs> <laughs> We'll help you out with some tactics you might need. All right, this thread was started by none other than Womble619 himself. <laughs> and he says, well, it's titled Kill G. Natuk in FF7 with a Phoenix Down. I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce that. Yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, I should imagine everyone knows this by now. But you can kill pretty much everything in Cosmo Canyon, including the main boss, instantly with a Phoenix down. Yeah, you can. <laughs> uh, most of the time... I didn't know this. Phoenix downs are fucking expensive in the very beginning of 7, to the point where you probably shouldn't kill everything with a Phoenix down. But mostly, What is it, like 300 gil? It's like three or 400. And when you're first getting into Cosmo, that's kind of steep for every enemy. Okay. So, so what I would recommend is just putting Cure and All... And just curing okay. them and then attacking them. But Phoenix down on the end, last enemy is beautiful. You know what? I've never used this trick in Cosmo Canyon. Uh, I guess I just didn't pay attention that everybody was a zombie type yeah. creature. Uh, I always just hit him with physical attacks and with magic. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, however, I have used Phoenix Downs on certain bosses to kill him instantly. Uh, the zombie president, after you take over the train in Final Fantasy VIII, he can be instantly killed with the Phoenix down, which is awesome, because otherwise, now, unless you know how to break the game, otherwise it's kind of a hard fight. Right, I remember um, Another Final Fantasy boss that you can kill instantly with a Phoenix down, uh, the second uh, version of Evre, the one in the water, it's like a black thing in Final Fantasy X, you know yeah, what I'm talking about? Yeah, the undead Evray. The undead Evray. You can throw a phoenix down on that, and it'll kill it instantly. That yeah. Beautiful. It's, beautiful thing. It's nice. He's not nearly as hard as the other every though. And there is another zombie boss in Final Fantasy X. I'm just having trouble remembering her name right now that you can use uh, phoenix downs on. Um, and it won't... I don't think it'll kill her. I think she's, like, immune to the phoenix down. Like, you'll miss every time. But, like, you can use, like, cure-type items against her. Oh, it'll do She's one damage. of the uh, like later bosses, and it'll do really good damage to her. Okay, that's always fun because the cures are usually. But you, you guys will have to look that up. I can't remember her name. Right. So yeah, good, uh, good yeah. tactic there. Good, good tactics. Basically, anything zombie like. If you guys for some reason don't already know this, use cure spells on them. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. So let's let's now go to the questions. <laughs> Okay, so our first question actually comes from 
basically the third host of the show that comes on every once in a while. He put this on the forum as a question to ask him, ask people. And uh, because it's on the forum, it's now a question for the questions uh, or uh, for the question segment. Okay. Um, so this is from Caleb F. Craig. Um, Magic and abilities play a huge part in any FF or RPG. Um, so what are some of yours? Uh, some of your favorites, I assume is what he means. Uh, maybe have a top five. Do you have a top five, maybe, of your favorite abilities uh, from Final Fantasy? Oh, man. Just think of some of your favorites. Chainsaw. Chainsaw was sweet. Chainsaw would be up there. I'm not going to have a list. I'll just have five of my favorites. Sure, yeah. We'll go Chainsaw. We'll go the Mix ability. The Mix ability? I have hardly ever used that thing. If you do Sunburst, it deals a disgusting amount of damage. Does it? To a lot of enemies, especially Evre. It deals a <laughs> shitload to Evre. It's like, yeah, I killed him classically. I, you can. He it's, was a rough fight, he, he admittedly. I think he's really the point in the game when... I guess shit gets tough. Yeah. So we've got the mix ability and <laughs> shit. I, I would say any limit break, basically. <laughs> Although the Kate Sith one, there's a, a roll of the die. I think it might be seven. If you roll seven, it'll kill anything instantly. Ooh. Any, any enemy. Ooh. Yeah, but it's it's not very It's common. gotta be hard to get. <laughs> yeah, so I kind of want to save right uh, above water and then go down and just fight Emerald over and over and over again until I roll the die and kill Have him. people done that? I I don't know. I think it's probably... Are you sure it's for enemy. bosses? or? Is... I think it's supposed to be everything in the game. It's just an insta-kill. Okay, well, someone will correct us if it's not, I'm yeah. sure. Yeah, please do. <laughs> so I'd say that one's really sweet. Hmm... Ultima up to seven because once you get into seven, Ultima doesn't do quite as much damage. Although maybe I just Ultima didn't does it quite a bit of damage in seven. Does it? Yeah. Because I uh, used it against the weapons and it was only doing like four thousand. That's still quite a bit of damage. My basic attacks. Are doing you're nine. basic. Yeah. When if you're at that point, <laughs> if you're on level ninety nine, which you are in one of your save files. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that's gonna be different. I would say Ultima because it's just a. But you could always spell. use some materia to max uh, to boost up your magic stats. Yeah. And have it do some more damage. But at its base, Ultima is a very powerful spell. In seven. Especially when you. Like now it. spamming Ultima in Final Fantasy VI may be the greatest thing ever known to mankind, uh, since it made the game very very easy. <laughs> well, I slaughtered him too, though, without the. That's true. I did have the ultimate sword. You had problems in that final area, though. Yeah, I did. Get into it. Well, I had problems because I had a dumbass party makeup. Right. I had four people who knew Ultima, so it didn't matter what was in right. the parties. So I'll say, as my probably my favorite ability, which is hard because it's only really godly in one game, is probably going to be Giltas. Oh my god, yes. In five. <laughs> oh, I totally agree. Giltas slash mime. All right, so these are mine. Giltas... Okay. And mime. <laughs> so I'm stealing those. Uh, it's hard not to say, it's hard not to repeat everything that you just said, but um, full life, um, I'd say selfies limit break from Final Fantasy VIII, where you can cast full life on your entire party. It's like the full life that like makes them get revived, too. And then full health. And full health yeah, on everybody. That That is amazing. Like... You would think that wouldn't happen that often because her limit break is kind of random, like which thing will allow it, but you can like keep retrying it over and over again until you get it. It's pretty amazing. Nice. It's pretty amazing. I love that one because it has saved my ass. <laughs> um, I also just like, yeah, limit breaks in the games are always a, are always great abilities. Um, especially, I'd say, Squalls, Rinzoken with the... Where he like just tears the earth apart afterwards. Yeah. It's pretty sweet. Um, visually, plus it does a lot of damage. Um, so that that's of course a good ability. And life three in Final Fantasy VI. Yes. <laughs> uh, the auto revive um, after you get killed is incredible. Um, I wish I had used it more. Yeah, and uh, I remember when I first played Dirge of Cerberus, and you can use Phoenix Downs on yourself. 
And when you die, you get res. And I was like, oh my god, I wish they had this in other games. And it turns out they did. At least in Final Fantasy VI, in the form of Life 3. And I think it's fairly similar in Dirge of Cerberus as well. It's kind of a normal Phoenix Down effect, where you don't get revived full health. So it's not, it's not quite as godly as selfies. But Life 3 is pretty awesome. Especially in that, uh, what is that, the cults, cultist tower? When you fight the the boss at the top of that tower and he casts the ultimate at the end of the fight. Mm -hmm. And it basically kills your party unless you have life right. three on something. Exactly. You need life three for that fight. Yeah, or reflect. But reflect sucks because then it bounces off your damn healing spells too. So it's life three is definitely the easiest in that fight. Yep. It's, yeah, that's useful. Uh, a good, another good spell, I'd say, like the meteor or comet spells. Yeah, those are uh, those are also powerful magic. I really love powerful magic because it makes it so I don't have to level up so much. Yeah, well, and a lot of them. <laughs> the nice thing about Ultima, especially, is that it's not elemental, okay. and I think comets the same way. Mm -hmm. So, no matter what it hits, it's going to do a shitload, and that's always beautiful. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, that's that's the question from Caleb. Um. Certainly, if you got your favorite stuff. For those who haven't already posted on that thread, uh, go ahead, put your favorite abilities down. We'd like to hear what those are. We always read the threads. Um, we don't. I don't always respond, but we're always. There. Um, I'm always. I'm always reading what you guys put down. Right. Um, I try to respond as much as I as much as if if there's a if there's something I can respond to, I'll respond to it. Um, we got another question here from Batman. Uh, once again, um, good forum guy here. Uh, I just started playing Kingdom Hearts, and I can't believe how well they balanced the FF and Disney universes. This got me thinking about what other franchises would make uh, good crossovers for the Final Fantasy series. My first thought would be a Final Fantasy Lord of the Rings crossover because they already had shared uh, several similarities. What do you What do you think? What do we think? I think that would be amazing because the Lord of the Rings is awesome. <laughs> and they already have done it in the form of Lord of the Rings, the Third Age. Right. The, you, the game you bought just to show me, and then we had to start playing all the Final Fantasies. Yeah. It's like the love child of Lord of the Rings and Final Fantasy X. Right. It is like the same, and it's awesome. And I'm pretty sure Evray is depicted as the oh, the the main ring wraith, the main Nazgul guy, the Nazgul king or whatever. Okay. He is a fucking hard fight. In that so game. certainly if you want a Final Fantasy Lord of the Rings game, Third Age is for you. Yeah. According to you. Two. I've never I've never played it. Yeah, it's really good. It's enjoyable. Is it good? It is. All right. It's not a necessarily a direct intended crossover but it's basically okay crossover. um some other um final fantasy um crossovers i think would be cool i think it'd be awesome if they had smash bros like if some final fantasy characters were in smash bros Oh, okay i, I think i think we all kind of want that though at, at some point yeah some kind of fighting game i i would actually prefer mortal Kombat, so maybe that but Ooh. <laughs> Yeah, I could see them doing that in Mortal Kombat, too, because they got Kratos and Yoda and mm -hmm. Darth Vader, whatnot. Right. That'd be kind of cool if we had some some love for the <laughs> for the main characters. Yep. Okay, is there anything else you can think of? <sighs> Nothing else I can really think of. I like Final Fantasy to be left alone for the majority of it. Other than that, it's mostly just fighting games I'm interested in. Okay. Yep. So we have other questions from Green Mushroom, right? Yeah. We, uh, you want to pull those up? Yep, he says, What is your favorite thing that carries across the games? Chocobos, Moogles, Spell Names, Sid, etc. Favorite thing that carries across? Yeah. Most useful is Chocobo. Right. <laughs> and, and Ultima, as, we, <laughs> as we've discussed already. Certainly. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and go with the Chocobo camp. There's nothing more useful than a Chocobo in any of the Final Fantasy games. Okay. I'm going to probably go with Airship. Oh, yeah, the airship. Yeah, that's and a good point. I really love the cat guys. In the, in the games without... The, <laughs> in the games without the airship, you certainly miss them. 
Yeah, it's rough. like I really, really, it's rough. And then uh, it's also far less interesting traveling from place to place. Like in ten, I guess there is an airship, but it's you don't get to see the scope of the world, which is something that's cool about the previous, you know, nine games. Yeah. <laughs> 10 and 12, same thing. Well, 12, you get to see the scope, though. But uh, you Yeah, you to... definitely get to see the scope because you have to walk through the whole fucking thing. Right, but you don't have... You don't have the ability to just fly wherever, and that's something I really missed mm -hmm. about those two. I'd say those two, and then probably the Moogles. I know I said earlier that I didn't really care for them too much, but they're pretty yeah, sweet. At the beginning, sure. when we started the playthroughs, hated Moogles... And now it's like Moogles are awesome. Yeah, they're pretty sweet. I don't. It took playing through the games in order. Yeah, I don't necessarily <laughs> care for the artwork of them, but no, they're I don't pretty either. cool overall. I don't either. I don't like the cute anime style that much. Yeah, I, I myself am a, in a more of a Mono fan than a Nomura fan. I agree. Are you in the same camp? Yes. Yeah. Uh, we against Nomura, but exactly. Love yeah. Mono's artwork. Um. We have one last question from Green Mushroom, is that correct? Yes. By the way, go to agreenmushroom.com, I believe is his site. Yeah, he plays all sorts of shit. He's been going through the games in order as well. And he well. has other games that yeah, he goes he through, play, too. Yeah, he plays a lot, I think, because he's always talking about, like, oh, I just finished Shadow of Mordor, and I'm like, geez, dude, I'm trying to finish <laughs> six, and you've finished nine and that in that time? Maybe that's just what he does. Is he's or just a, a blogger. I don't know. a short game, I'm not sure. <laughs> Maybe. There are certainly most video games are shorter than the Final Fantasy games. Yeah, it's kind of desensitizing. You know, I get back and I play Bioshock 2 after, I think it was in between 5 and 6, and I beat it in like 7 hours or something like that. I'm like, like wow. What? Yeah, I, beat, I think I beat both of the Halo games I've done a, like an overnight playthrough of. Or not both of the Halo games, but the first two Halo games. Right. Both. So, yeah, both. Both 7. And then I think Metal Gear Solid 3 was really short, too. I remember going through that. Yeah, and that, really awesome. I think I had. I think it was like eleven hours of gameplay or something like that. That I, there was like one hour that I didn't even need because I didn't realize the end would just the end fight was just a pain. Okay, let's go on to our last question here. All right, so he asks, which do we prefer? Random encounters or seeing the enemies in the field? What do you think? Well, I'll be honest well, here. His actual question is, which games do you prefer? The ones that you see, you have random battles, or the ones that you see the enemies? And that's a different question. We'll address both aspects of the question. Sure. Uh, playing through these first six Final Fantasy games, and now I'm on seven, of course. Uh, I am starting to pull my hair out every time I get into a random battle. Okay. Like, I'm trying to walk somewhere, and then it just stops, and then I have to fight a battle. It's okay when you're just playing, like, one Final Fantasy, take a little break, and then maybe go on to another Final Fantasy months later. Um, in a row, though, it is starting to grind on me. <laughs> Man. <laughs> it, like, really, like, at the end of Final Fantasy VI, I was ready to kill someone if I, like saw like the screen blur and like go into the back go into the battle and like i'm so sick of this yeah fucking shit well i mean you try to go and complete a task like figure out a puzzle right and then you get into this fight and if it's a tough fight it's you know a couple minutes of fighting then you get out and you're like fuck what was i doing before i got into this goddamn battle right and and so playing 11 is actually kind of refreshing in that way i mean 11 is way too fucking hard uh right now at the beginning you're just everything's over leveled um, it's also tough because you don't have people helping you. Like, yeah, you that's know. which is how you're supposed to play the game. Um, but it is kind of refreshing that way. Now, games I prefer, I would have to say that the best Final Fantasy games are the turn-based ones, are are the random battle ones. Um, yeah, oh yeah. The it, one through ten. One through ten. I, I'm just thinking six, seven, and ten, and eight's probably my personal favorite. Um, okay. You know, it's yeah. Uh, we'll talk about that when we get to. Eight. We will talk about it. Um, they're they're the best games in the series. Um, nine is another good one. They're all random battles, and uh, my views on them are all positive. Yeah, for the most part. All right, so yeah. like the games, don't necessarily like the random battles anymore. That's probably about not playing them in a row. I I don't think it's that big of a deal if you're just playing them. 
No, because I never thought that before. I mean, there were times where I was just like, oh my god, I'm trying to go. Yeah, doing go. puzzles in six with like the switches and shit. Yeah, that was a pain. Me, it was horrible. It wasn't as bad as I was expecting when you were like, oh man, I had to, I had to use a guide to get through the puzzles. I was like, oh my god, it wasn't that brutal, but it was definitely. I definitely pulled some hair out. So I, I'm probably in the same boat with it. I think the battle system in 12, I guess 11 started it, but it kind of doesn't count because it's MMO and that's how they all are. That'd be it, bullshit. It does count. It's got, it, it's got the Roman Dude. numerals on it, man. Nah, whatever. But So with 12 and 13, I enjoy how you see the enemies in the field. I like that a lot. Mm -hmm. It's kind of sadistic. Because they, they see I don't you. like 12. The following of the yeah. 12. Yeah, they, they they strike fear into your heart, and they love it. So I hate it. I, I enjoyed it in 12. <laughs> I really liked it. It sucks when you're trying to run away, though, and you like run into a corridor, and you're just like, oh, God. You turn the camera around, and there's like fucking 10 of them. I think it's coming. more like an open field, and you see a bunch of flying shit, and for some odd reason, they all gathered right where you're going to go. So you got like three guys chasing after you. Mm -hmm. And they're all flying, so none of your guys with, like, swords can hit them. Yeah, they have to use spells. And, <sighs> like and they're doing massive damage, and you're just trying to get to the next area so that they'll stop following you. Right. So I do, I do, like, I do like that, even though it has its downside. What fuck's the matter with you? But I also like the, the games that the random battles occur in. They're better overall. Okay. So it's, I'm sure that's not what he meant by the question. I'm sure it's, do we like random battles or non-random battles? Which the answer is... Non-random after playing a Jillian random. Right, but usually random's fine. Yeah, I, I, I didn't really notice. And there are certainly fun aspects. Final Fantasy V was really fun to me. Like, I would get into a battle and I'd be like, yes, I could uh, use my, you know, shit to... Yeah, your sadistic damage. <sighs> Five was so much fun for me, I'd say. And <laughs> yeah. six was really well balanced, so it wasn't really hair pulling except when you're doing a fucking puzzle. Yeah, that makes it stressful. And seven is the same way. Do you want, like, the, the train area... Even though that puzzle's not necessarily hard to do, the fact that I'm doing a puzzle and then getting stopped on my way to do shit, that pisses me off. Yeah. I, I agree with you. It's a pain. So, I would say the perfect, I think the, the perfect system is 13s. Yeah. Where you see them, but then you go into like a turn-based kind of thing. It's kind of a hybrid. After you hit them, yeah, the hybrid, I think, I know everybody hates 13, especially on the forums, but, uh... I like that system okay. quite a bit. Fair so enough. I think that's going to end it for this episode. You agree, so, Caleb? Yeah. I, I think it's time. All right. So make sure you guys uh, leave an iTunes review. Give us new questions for next week. If you got a uh, spot the FF or um, tactic uh, you might need or anything like that, put them on the forums. Join our forums, please. Yeah. We've been getting new members, and we're, we're excited to meet them. Come say hi. Yeah. All right. We'll see you guys next week. Enjoy the grind. This has been another production of Ultima Final Fantasy, the ultimate Final Fantasy podcast. The show was produced by Joseph DeGaulier and Caleb Schweiss with music and editing by Joseph DeGaulier, parodies and clips from their respective authors, of course. You can get all of our episodes as well as our Let's Plays at ultimafinalfantasy.com. You can also contact us on Twitter at UFF Podcast as well as our contact page on our website. Be sure to subscribe and review our podcast. Your reviews may get read on the show. And look forward to the next episode of Ultima Final Fantasy, the ultimate Final Fantasy podcast.